Testing, testing, testing. Good evening. How's everyone this evening? Praise God. Blessed on this end too. It's a plum pleasing pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. Boy, those lights are kind of bright. Almost like Hollywood. Yeah, I had to run. <laughs> Wanted to get on the countdown. Uh, again, it's a plum pleasing pleasure to be here with you. Glad to see you back out. We're going to have a real powerful session this afternoon, so please, please, if you can, take some notes. Okay, Father, we thank you for this day. Bless us that we might leave here with that which we came for, which is a higher quality of life. Little tidbits that we can do on a daily basis to raise our level of health. And we thank you for giving us this information, mainly from the Bible, which is the greatest prescription of all, the greatest medical book of all, is the B-I-B-L-L-E. So bless us that we might be a blessing is our prayer, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Did anybody remember what we talked about last week? Anybody? The Bible way. Does anybody know what the letters of the Bible way stood for? How about the B? It stood for best food and combinations. What was the best food and combination? Anybody? Live food, fruits, nuts, grains, and after sin, God added what? The vegetables. So fruit, nuts, grains, and vegetables. Uh, next letter was an I, which stood for intake of plenty of water. What was the, well, let's do it this way. In Ezekiel 4.11, we were shown a, no, a number of ounces of water to drink. How many ounces were we shown? Eight in Ezekiel 4.11. Then we found something else out, and that was the actual formula for the number, the amount of water to drink. Anybody know what that formula was? Half of your body weight in ounces of pure water every day. So if you weighed 130 pounds, you divide that in half, you have what? 64 ounces. 64 ounces is how many glasses? Eight. If you weigh 200 pounds, you divide that in half, that's 100 ounces. 96 ounces is 12 glasses. So a 200-pound person would drink about 12 glasses. So the more you weigh, the more you drink. Why? Because for every one pound that you are overweight, your body has to make an extra three-quarters of a mile of blood vessels to service the area, okay? That means the more of you the more your heart has to work. And when your heart has to do all that extra work, you only got one heart, guess what's going to happen? You're going to end up with some type of coronary artery disease, some kind of heart problem. And that's why we want to try to stay around. And so, therefore, drinking enough water will help that. The next B was for being temperate. Don't overwork, don't overeat, don't overdrink. Don't do the thing that breaks up relationships and tears up churches. Don't talk too much, okay? And uh, then the next letter was an L, lots of rest and sleep. We found that in Ecclesiastes 5.12. Uh, the, uh, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet, but the abundance of the wealthy won't suffer him to rest. So if you work, you're supposed to get good sleep. That's why God gave it to you, a chance for your body to recuperate and recover at night. Uh, the next letter was an L, and it stood for what? Lots of rest and sleep. How many hours of sleep did we say were the best hours? Well, what were the best hours of sleep? Let's do it that way. From 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. Thank you, my sister. We've got a student up here, okay? Very good, very good, very good. Why was that the best six hours of sleep? Because the what? The moon. The moon has a gravitational pull. In Genesis, God said, I put two lights in the sky. The great light to rule by day. What was the great light? Sun. And then the uh, lesser light by night. That's the moon. And the moon has a gravitational pull on the earth in the evening that causes the tide to do what? Go in. Are you getting this? And it also puts pressure on you and the earth, and it helps you to sleep better. Y'all didn't know that? God was looking out for you. He gave you a moon to help you sleep and get into a deep sleep. The next letter was an E, and it stood for exercise daily. What was the best form of exercise? Good, brisk walking. Absolutely. Not this. They ain't walking. They talking. Good, brisk walking. 
Okay? I mean, you're stretching it out. I mean, you're stepping it out. Well, I can't do that because I weigh too much. Whoa, 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 whoa. No such thing. Whatever you weigh, if you're doing this and you're putting something into it, that's brisk walking for you. So there's no excuse because you can't walk this way. I can remember a little lady. She must have been about 75 or 80 years old. I was about 40. And I'm out there, man. I'm getting down. I'm walking. And I look up. And this little lady comes on by. And so I pick it up. She picks it up. I pick it up. She picks it up. After a while, I had to stop. The little lady walked away. And next thing I know, she's coming back around the track behind me again. So what does that mean? Some people just walk faster than others, okay? So all I'm saying is you can do what it takes for you. You don't measure yourself by anybody else. You can get started today and get your walking in. 35 to 40 minutes a day, we'll, uh, five, six days a week, will do what? It'll bring your blood pressure down, your sugar level down. It'll literally put, take your energy level up, okay? Take your waistline in, make your food digest, make your bowels move. Are y'all listening to me? Just walking. We're looking at prescriptions from the great physician, okay? And uh, the next uh, letter was a, was it B-I-B-L-E, W was wonderful sunshine, that's the greater light. It did a lot of things, but what did the sunshine give us specifically? Vitamin D, it gave us vitamin D. 15 minutes of sunlight on your hands and on your face every day is enough to give you strong stores of vitamin D that goes into your liver and it stays there until your body needs it is vitamin D. It blends with your calcium and it gives you strong bones, strong hair, strong nails, and strong skin, okay? Uh, the next letter then, therefore, was A. And it stood for what? Air fresh and clean. The most important uh, element in the world is what? Oxygen. Because God breathed into man's nostrils a Coca-Cola and he became a living soul. That's not what happened, is it? <laughs> no, he breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. The first gift that God gave man was breath, was oxygen. And so we said that we would practice oxygen cocktails. That simply means getting more oxygen into your diaphragm. Okay, I like it when it makes that sound, okay? That means you're filling up with oxygen. Yeah, your shoulders are squaring off and you're feeling good. What was the actual formula for, uh, for breathing? You would breathe in through your nostrils and you would count to what? Ten. You'd breathe out through your mouth and you'd count to what? Five. So if you got used to, you got used to that, you would build up to the point where you could hold so much oxygen that your blood pressure would go down. Your heart rate would slow. If you felt anxiety, you could get it to diminish. Y'all listen to what I'm saying. Just breathing, taking in more of the oxygen that God gave us. Folks always, uh, my wife used to tease me, but she said, you're the only man I know that can walk into a pulpit with a gallon of water and a chef hat on, okay? Y'all wonder why I do that? Anybody? Shake, hold your hand up if you do. You don't wonder. Anybody know why I do that? Anybody? Example. A picture is worth a what? A thousand words. And the, the very fact that Jesus Christ came to this earth, lived, died, and resurrected over a piece of fruit tells you that eating is important. So when I have this chef hat on, it's saying to you, eating is important. You can't just eat anything as long as you what? Pray over it. You've got to look and see what was God's original intention for you. So again, that's one of the reasons. Then water is because water is so important. If you don't drink enough water, your bones are going to dry up. Your skin's going to dry up. Your blood's going to get thick as mud and won't be able to pass through your veins. Am I making any sense? Praise God. All right, all right, all right. So uh, that takes us down to the uh, air fresh and clean. And then the Y stands for yield to God's will always. Now, I talk for a living, so I'm almost done with my gallon for the day. How about that? Got a little bit more, a little bit more. So, Bible way, free prescriptions from God on how to live. Those eight prescriptions followed on a daily basis will help your health to come back to you. Because health is not a what? A chance. It's a what? A choice. Health is a choice. You got to remember that. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Grandma and granddaddy and all of them had high blood pressure, so I got to have it too. My, my aunt had uh, breast cancer and my mother had breast cancer, so I've got to have it too. There was a woman once about 25 years ago, a young black woman, beautiful black woman, and she was on the news preaching to the world, all the black women of the world. She was telling them, you need to go and have preventive surgery. What kind of surgery? Breast surgery. In other words, her mother and her grandmother both died of breast cancer, so she figured that she was what? Going to get breast cancer. She was next in line. So she went and got her breast cut off to keep from ever having cancer. Does that make good sense to you? It didn't make good sense to me either when I heard it. I was appalled. How could you do that? And she was on the air around the world telling all African-American women especially to go get their breasts cut off so they wouldn't have breast cancer. Duh. Figure out what it is that you've been doing to cause the breast cancer. Stop doing that and then let the body do what? Heal itself. Makes more sense. So today we're going to look at something. Everybody is getting sick and uh, for the most part, most of us don't know why. The medical profession won't tell you why you're sick. They say, well, yes, it's like this. Uh, you know, uh, we're trying to figure out why you um, uh, have high blood. Let's see, uh, uh, let's see, do you, uh, 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 do anybody in your family has high, have high blood? And you say, well, uh, let's see, my Uncle Joe and my grandpa. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's where it came from. Now we've got it, that's it. And so now you got to be on medicine for how long? The rest of your life because they're saying that it was what hereditary but the key to life is this let's see it's, it's, it's a little dark in here how are you doing young lady right yeah yes ma'am with the beautiful red hair what what, what what's your name Lorita Wilhelmina Wilhelmina you have a, a very, very pronounced nose. It looks like it might be part Indian, a little African, but it's real nice nose, prominent nose. When did you get that nose, Wilhelmina? I can see your nose very well. I see your nose very well, just like I see the, 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 the color in your hair. Yes, ma'am. When did you get that nose? It's a pronounced nose. It's, it's a nice nose. When did you get it? Huh? God gave it to you, but when exactly did you get it? When you were born, when do most people get their high blood and their diabetes? 40, 50. So which one is hereditary? The no, Wilhelmina's nose. Nice nose. She got it. God gave it to her. She got it from her. I don't know. Who's it more like, mom or dad? In the middle? Okay. All right. So the bottom line is, when did she get it? At birth. That's called what? Hereditary. But something that you get at 40 and 50 is not hereditary. As a matter of fact, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, arthritis, rheumatoid, all those different things are called what? NCDs. What does that mean? Non-communicable disease. Communicable, communicate, community. In other words, it's not something that you give to someone else or that you can get from someone else. Are y'all listening to me? The system is telling you it's not communicable, but they'll let you think it so they can keep what? Come on. Am I making any sense? Tell me if I'm not so I can get it straight. I want to come to you with the truth. The whole idea is, yes, I bring some things to you never heard before, and I talk to you about some things that'll make you laugh. You ought to laugh, because if you can laugh about stuff that's, that's, that you didn't understand, then you can do what? Change it. Does that make sense? All right, all right, all right. So, uh, we're talking about diseases that can be changed. So today we're going to talk about diseases. We're going to talk about the, the uh, secret weapon of the deadliest hitman. What did I say? The secret weapon of the what? Deadliest hitman. The deadliest hitman, you're going to find out in a minute, are things like diabetes, heart problems, cancer, you know, that osteoporosis, because those are the things that are taking people out every day. So those are the hit men, but they all have one weapon that they use. And it's not a gun, it's not a pistol, it's not an AK-47. So we're going to see that today. So if I've got help up in the media room, we're going to take a look at it. It's called the 
um, secret weapon of the deadliest hitmen. And you know, I'm looking up there. Okay, there it is, the secret weapon used by the world's deadliest hitmen. Let's go and see if we can't get started and find out what that is. Let's take a peek at our first slide. Conquering the number one killer. What is the number one killer in the world today? Heart problems, heart disease, coronary artery disease, things that have to do with the heart. You, conquering the number one killer. You, no, 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 not yet. You see that individual up there? He's got a heart, he's had a heart attack. You see the ambulance? You hear that all day, every day. And nine times out of ten is someone, Wilhelmina, that just had a heart attack or a stroke or their pressure's up so high that they're about to leave out of here. Every day, all day. Next slide. So, it says the percentage of cardiovascular deaths. What is the percentage that people in different countries die of when they die? When they die how many of them die of cardiovascular or heart problems? Well, let's look at Africa. In Africa, 10 to 20% of the people that die every year die of a heart problem, heart disease, heart attack, stroke, aneurysm. Wow, 10 to 20%. But let's look at Central America. In Central America, it's more like 20 to 30%. And if we come to Asia, China, Japan, all those company, countries, we're 30 to 40%. The Middle East, 39 to 47%. So as we travel around the world and we leave Africa and we get to Asia, what are we doing? We're getting closer to where? North America, the United States. Oh, let's look at this then. In uh, South America, 30 to 40 percent. You know, Australia and all them kind of places. Middle East, 39 to 47 percent. Western Europe, United States, and Australia. Three of the most popular places to go and travel and tour in the world because they got the best food, the best this, the best that. But they die how much? 42 to 48 percent of the deaths are from heart disease, heart problems. That is deep, folks. And then, of course, Eastern Europe. Ooh, boy, the Europeans are having a ball because you're looking at 42 to 48 percent. Now it's higher than that. It's almost 55 to 60 percent. What's the difference in these different countries? The food, the diet. And when you go to Africa and then you come all the way over to America and Eastern Europe, what is it that the Eastern Europeans and the Americans are doing or eating that everybody else is not eating as much of? What's that? Okay, but what is the kind that they're eating that's making them sick? Meat, flesh, animal, protein, too much cholesterol. Whoa. Okay, next slide. Again, the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, and um, the Institute, the National Institute of Health, the Health the Heart Foundation, Diabetes Foundation, Cancer Society, uh, Arthritis Foundation, all of them came together and agreed that there was a certain thing that was happening that was making us sick. And if we ate differently, how many, disease, how many heart attacks were preventable? Nine out of ten. The WHO, the World Health Organization, all these people said that nine out of ten heart diseases, heart strokes, aneurysms, all of this was preventable. Are y'all listening to me? I'm simply helping you to see that the health professionals, the health organizations, the top ones, tell you that you don't have to have a heart attack. But yet still, they'll say, oh, well, yeah, you know, it's hereditary. You're going to have to be on this, these meds for the rest of your life. Next slide. We're going to take a look at something here. The big three problems, causes of uh, having heart disease, smoking's number one. What's the second one? High blood pressure, hypertension. We're going to look at that a little deeper. But high blood pressure. High blood pressure is because of what? What is it that happens to the arteries that make them build up pressure? The wrong food. What is the wrong food? Nobody wants to say it? High cholesterol, meat, yes, but definitely cholesterol. So high blood pressure is caused by cholesterol. We get cholesterol because we're doing what? Eating the wrong food. So the reason for high blood pressure is bad eating, right? Okay, well, how about high cholesterol itself? We're eating what? The wrong foods. 
So two out of three of the reasons for having high, bl I mean, have high blood pressure or any coronary artery disease is basically bad eating. Uh, and we see what uh, the big three are. You see it's sausage, eggs, cheese, and uh, meat, ham, salami, turkey, whatever, whatever we eat, Hit, hog head, souse. Y'all ever had that? I did. Ever had chitlins? I did. We call them doo-doo shoots. Okay, all right. Just like to laugh, like to smile. Next. Heart attacks, certain cancers, osteoporosis, diabetes. The major diseases of our society may be caused in part by what we eat. Attacks, lights for a minute. Is it possible to cut the brighter lights for a minute? See if we can see. If, if possible, if not, we won't worry about it. Okay, can we try again? Heart attacks, certain cancers, osteoporosis, diabetes. The major diseases of our society may be caused in part by what we eat. One of the physicians who helped me to understand why is Dr. Michael Clapper. I first woke up, so to speak, when I was working on the anesthesia service, learning how to put people to sleep. And I was seeing my patients for the next day's surgery for coronary artery bypass surgery in order to bypass clogged arteries in their heart. Because it was late at night, I drew the man's blood test. And when I took the blood to the laboratory and had it processed, I couldn't believe my eyes. Now, normally, this liquid layer floating on top of the blood clot is quite transparent. It's a yellow, but quite clear. You can see right through it. The blood in this patient's tube, however, was anything but clear. The serum floating on his clot was thick and greasy white. It looked like glue. In fact, it stuck to the sides of the blood tube when I shook the tube. I went back to the patient. I said, Mr. Phillips, did you eat before you came to the hospital tonight? He said, yes. I said, what did you have? He said, I had a cheeseburger and a milkshake. And when he said that, I realized that what I was looking at in his tube was all the fat in the beef burger, all the butter fat in the cheese, and the butter fat in the ice cream, and in the milkshake. And all this fat had oozed out into his blood and actually turned his blood fatty. Well, 30, 40, 50 years of keeping your blood very fatty creates changes in the blood vessels that are very dangerous. Over the years, arteries can become clogged with fatty material. Then a blood clot can form, blocking the blood flow completely. If the artery leads to the heart, the lack of oxygen can cause heart muscle to die. That's a heart attack. If the clogged artery leads to the brain, the patient has a stroke. The next morning, we took Mr. Phillips to the operating room, and I put him to sleep, and the surgeon opened up his chest. And from these arteries, he began pulling out yellow, greasy deposits of fatty material called atherosclerosis. You know, if you were to die of a heart attack, and it's the most common cause of death in the country today, you might have an autopsy performed. It's a fairly common procedure. It used to be more common, but it's still done many, many times. What would happen is your body would be laid out on the autopsy table. And they would cut open your chest and, and dig around in there and find the coronary artery, the artery feeding the heart, that had gotten plugged up, depriving the heart of its flow of oxygen and blood, killing it, killing you. And they'd find that artery and they'd ream it out. They'd literally pull out a, a thick sausage-shaped piece of fatty, waxy material that killed you. And they send it very carefully down to the pathology lab. Next day, the results come back, and they always say the same thing. This has been done approximately three million times in medical research in the world. The results always say the same thing. They say, in effect, saturated fat and cholesterol. Now, never once have they come back and said broccoli and tofu. All right, all right. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you all able to hear that plainly? You can hear it okay up here, it sounds like an echo. But what he's saying is atherosclerosis or that hardening of the arteries and that blocking of your arteries and your veins is basically 
you saw the little sausage-like thing that they pulled out of the vein? That's atherosclerotic plaque, which is cholesterol and calcium and other minerals and things in the water you drink, binding together and clogging up that artery so that the blood can't get through. And Leviticus 17, 11 tells us that the life of the flesh is in the what? The blood. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Some of y'all look like y'all were going to sleep, so I can't sing, but I thought I'd wake you up. You know, what in the world is he doing? The bottom line, if your blood is not flowing like it should be, you can't possibly have good health. What is it that helps the blood to flow? Good nutrition that's being digested, being assimilated into the body, and the waste coming out. It's a system. If any parts of that system don't work, you're going to be sick. If you don't digest the food, you're not getting any nutrition, you're going to be sick. If you digest the food, but you're not assimilating it or getting it, same thing, you're going to be sick. Or if you digest it, assimilate it, but you can't pass it out, and it sits there and rots and putrefies and morbid, becomes morbid material, gets reabsorbed into your system, you're not going to be well. So you got to do all three. And all three of those take the right diet that God gave you because that diet had everything in it that was needed. Is that a hand? Yes. Yeah, the question is, and uh, we're going to hold our questions to question period, but that's a good question. Is it, does it have anything to do with the fact that we're feeding? Yes, yes, yes. Have you looked at families that are obese and you saw a man walking with his wife and she was obese, he was obese, and the two little children were obese too? That means that everybody in the house just eats all that they want to eat as much as they want to and whenever they, am I making sense? So they start, remember, we talked about what heredity is, okay, that's when you get it at birth. Well, m we used to be that people didn't get heart problems and diabetes until they were in their 40s and 50s and 60s. Now, 30s and 40s, even preteens, nine-year-old children are obese. Eight, nine, ten-year-old children are having diabetes and high blood pressure because just as my sister is saying here, they start off eating just all kinds of way at a very early age. And now we've moved into that situation where they're fast food age. Uh, you heard what he said about the man? The man had the heart attack, and he said, what did you, did you eat before you had the heart attack? He said, yeah. He said, well, what did you eat? He said, well, I had a burger. You know, we probably had a Big Mac with cheese, right? Double burger with cheese, and I had a milkshake. So this guy had a burger, double patty probably, and they was loaded with what? fat, grease, or cholesterol. Probably had french fries loaded with what, cholesterol. Then he had a milkshake, which was what? Butter fat. So all that fat, instead of being clear, as you could see it, it was white like glue. And it stuck to the edges of the tube, which means that it's sticking to the walls of your arteries, and over a period of years, it becomes hardened, closes off the blood, Heart attack, stroke, aneurysm. So, so you're seeing it? It's an eating problem. We're digging our graves with a knife and a fork. As a matter of fact, I want you all to see something. I'm going to spell a word, and you all tell me what it is quickly as you recognize it. D-E-A-T-H. What's that? Death. Take the D off the front and take the H off the end. What do you have? Eat. Three-fifths of eat I'm sorry, death is eat. Y'all get that? That's supposed to make you laugh and smile. I want y'all to smile because once you learn the truth, you ought to be able to laugh at what you didn't know. So it says that God winks at our ignorance. If you didn't know, okay, he blessed you, you're still alive. Now you're learning something. You're getting your back pinned against the wall. Most of you don't like that because it means you got to make a change. But what if the change is going to help you have an extra 20 years of life? And what if it's going to help you to have another 10, 15 years, but not hooked up to a dialysis machine and not walking around, uh, you know, almost crippled, not having legs amputated, not being blind? Am I making any sense? Who, that's not living. 
That's existing. Hooked to a machine or hooked to seven or eight medicines for the rest of your life. You don't have to have that, okay? Um, my father, bless his soul, um, died in 1972. He died, died of a massive stroke. His brain almost exploded in his head. He was eating barbecue. Right after that, he drank some of his scotch, smoked a cigarette, and had, an aneurysm, had a stroke right there at the table. Rushed him to the hospital. He was in Cleveland, Ohio. His best friend called me and said, Butch, that's my name, Butch. Frank, that's my father, Frank Sr., has had a heart attack. We're taking him to Cleveland Clinic. How fast can you get here? Within two and a half hours, I was on a plane in Charlotte, North Carolina, headed to Cleveland. I got there. His friend Brunson met me at the airport and said, I'm sorry, Bush, but Frank didn't make it. So I got mad at medicine because Cleveland, anybody ever heard of Cleveland Clinic? It's the largest institution of heart fixing, okay, in the world. There are more heart doctors there, surgeons and all of that, than anywhere else in the world. They do more research. The Framingham study, okay, the China study, they did all these things, and a lot of it had to do with Cleveland Clinic. So I got mad at medicine and decided I didn't want to be a doctor. I was in school my fourth year uh, of pre-med. But bottom line, what I did then was I just, I don't know, I was upset. I was mad with medicine. Later on, I found out that there was another way, and that was the natural way. And I looked at it because he was 72, I was 22, and I smoked the same cigarettes, drank the same scotch, and ate the same barbecue. So if I was 22, he was 52, that means that I probably wouldn't have made it to 32. Can y'all hear me? That was my dilemma. And I changed everything a few years later. And in 1980, I became what I call a strict vegetarian. No more drinking, no more smoking, no more nothing. Staying out late at night, uh, I just let it all go. And I found it all, guess where? Can y'all guess where I found that information? The B-I-B-L-E, the greatest medical book ever. The greatest any kind of book, <laughs> economic book, whatever it is you need in life, God put it right there in the Bible. And so uh, I then became what I call now a health evangelist. So for the last 45 years, I've worked with people all over the world, churches, uh, like this church, little small churches, churches even larger than this, 15, 16, 17,000 members. And uh, I've been blessed to help people to live a higher quality of life, over 15 to 16,000 people. Uh, my first uh, three children, uh, I helped with their delivery. The last four, I delivered at home myself with God's help. So I've seen health from the cradle to the grave. Nothing special except that I prayed and asked God to give me the wisdom to help you understand what health is. Health is not a chance, it's a, it's a lifestyle and it's a choice. you got to remember that or you're going to be a victim for the rest of your life. They're going to tell you that you've got to take these drugs for the rest of your life. They're going to tell you, we got to cut that out, you don't need it. And in nine out of 10 cases, that's not true. These stents that they're putting in your chest, cutting out part of your artery and putting in some plastic or rubber to replace it or getting it from your leg and putting that artery in your chest, it's not necessary in a lot of cases. Some of those same doctors, Dr. Cla Clapper, okay, these doctors literally were having heart attacks. They were operating on you 50,000, 75, 100, 150,000, 200,000 dollar operations, okay, three, four, five bypasses, but they wouldn't do it to themselves. And when they start having heart problems, guess what they did? They changed their diets and lifestyles. Am I making any sense? Don't you dare leave here tonight without understanding that you don't have to have a heart attack, you don't have to have high blood pressure, you don't have to have diabetes, okay? We're going to go to our next, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so there's high cholesterol. High cholesterol is in foods like what? Cheese, milk, chicken, beef, fish, uh, eggs, uh, sausage, steak. 
Well, Brother Franco, I don't eat red meat anymore. I only eat white meat. I eat chicken and fish. There's just as much cholesterol in chicken and fish as there is in beef and pork. Didn't know that, did you? Let me explain something to you. In the Jewish community, they don't eat pork, right? They don't eat pork as a, as a religion, as a people, right? But they like skins. Anybody in here like skins? I used to tab some skin. Y'all know what skins are? Y'all don't know about skins? Let me see your hands. Okay, you've had skins with hot sauce on them. My, what? Well, a skin is made from what? Pork. And Jewish folks eat skins. Guess where their skins come from? Chicken. All they do is they just, just cut the, 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 the skin off the chicken with that little layer underneath and throw it in the skillet. You don't even need grease. Guess what it does? It fries. It's loaded with grease or what? Cholesterol. <laughs> and it tastes basically like a skin. I hope y'all are getting this. Chicken, fish, God gives the animals grease inside of their bodies because they don't wear clothes like we do. Inside of the walls of your house, there's something called what? Insulation. Do you change it in the summer or in the winter? No. It keeps you cool in the summer and it keeps you warm in the winter, right? But you don't have to change it. So the, the, the animals have this cholesterol, this thick, thick grease inside of their bodies that keeps them warm in the what? Winter and cool wind in the summer. Are you getting it? So it's good for them, but not for you because your body can't break it down. And it's going to clog up your arteries, your veins, your bones, your colon. Something's going to get clogged up and you're going to have a major disease. So uh, again, no cholesterol in vegetables, fruits, nuts, and grains. Y'all got to get this. So it has nothing to do with I'm eating. No, 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 no. You're eating the wrong stuff. All that over on your left side is wrong because it's loaded with grease. When cholesterol, it tastes great, but it's not good for you. Next slide. High blood pressure is another hit man that's taken us out. Uh, they're all a part of heart disease or coronary artery disease, but it stands pretty much on its own because it's called the what? The silent killer. Folks will say, I have just a slight blood pressure or don't even know that they have high blood pressure. Just, uh, I have headaches every now and then. You know, every now and then I feel a little dizzy. Well, that's really high blood pressure in a lot of cases. And they literally go home and have a heart attack, an aneurysm, or a stroke. Never knew that they had high blood pressure. That's why it's called the silent killer. Next slide. It says 600 million people worldwide have hypertension or high blood pressure. Well, that slide there is about 15 years old, 10, 15 years old. Right now, it's uh, 1.3 billion people have uh, hypertension. And where it says 3 million die annually, it's 715 million now. So with all the, the research all the money that they're throwing into researching cancer and high blood and diabetes, instead of it getting better, it's getting what? Worse. It's getting worse, folks. Next slide. Every third adult has high blood pressure. On my row, right in the middle row, front, there are three. Yeah, you're looking right. You three, you three beautiful sisters. I think there's a sister there. I want have a hard time. Saying, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, everybody in here, we're all in here together. If either one of you has either high blood or slightly high uh, blood pressure, raise your hand, please. Okay, I got one. That, it says one out of three. Every third adult has hypertension. This morning, almost everybody on, the first, on that row had high blood pressure. So it's actually two out of three now, but you all showed that at least one out of three is what it says there, every third person. And thank you all for being honest, okay? But the key is, this is powerful. And you don't have to have it because Dr. Franco said so, right? No. The health professionals are telling you you don't have to have it. If you would just do something, adopt something. And we're going to talk about that in, the middle, uh, in just a minute. Next uh, slide, please. 
causes of hypertension. Obesity. What causes obesity? Too much what? Too much meat, too much fat in the diet that gets into the body, the body can't break it down, and it just absorbs in the body, okay? So that has to, be, that has to do with eating. High salt intake. What do we put salt on? Everything that we do what? Eat. <laughs> so therefore, that has to do with eating too. Then there's smoking, alcohol, and caffeine. Plugged arteries. What does that come from? Too much cholesterol. I know it seems over and over why you keep talking about the same thing. I can't help it because it's true. And you've got to see it if you're going to ever get well from this. Or you're going to continually say, my doctor put me on uh, 15 meds. You know? And some of you even brag about your disease. I have a special kind of uh, heart disease. Only 30 people in North America have the kind that I have. My cancer is, is very, very special. What? Your cancer just, your heart problem just became a pet? You got a special name for it? And you're bragging about it? The devil is trying to kill you? And you're having a good time with it? Oh, my goodness, folks. All right. So then we've got uh, physical inactivity, not getting enough exercise. We already looked at the... Um, the, the, the eight prescriptions, and one of them was exercise, walking, and then stress. Stress is something, boy. Stress is really, really something. It'll take, the, take you out while the other ones are not bothering you. The stress will take you out. So next slide. We're going to see something here. So people say, well, I have just slightly elevated blood pressure. My blood pressure is under control. I say, really? Yeah, I've got it under control. Really? How are you controlling it <laughs> with my drugs? So if the drugs are keeping it down, the drugs are basically like a boxer. They're hitting you with a punch that'll break your jaw and knock you out. That's the power behind it. And so they're forcing the blood vessels to do what? Open up. But you're constantly eating all this grease that's doing what? Hardening your arteries. All that calcium is being absorbed on that, and they're hardening, and pretty soon they're going to get so hard and so plugged up that they're going to do what? Pow! And that's an aneurysm, a heart attack, and a stroke. And sometimes people are taking their meds, they go to the doctor, the, the doctor says, you look fine. And they go home, take their meds, and have a stroke. Have you seen anybody do that? You've got relatives that are taking their meds every day and still have a heart attack or stroke. Maybe I didn't say it right. Anybody in here know somebody that was taking their medicines properly and had a stroke? Anybody raise your hand? Yeah, most of you know that. That's powerful stuff. So if the stuff that's supposed to get you well is still allowing you to die, is that something you really need? You got to think about that. I'm not telling you to do or not do your meds. I'm only telling you to think. My job is to help you to think. Christ said, come and let us do what? Reason together. Because the enemy is so powerful that he will deceive even the very what? Elect. Who's the very elect? We are. And so we've been deceived. We've been hypnotized into believing that only one thing will get us well, and that's drugs, medications, scalpels, you know, uh, that kind of thing. So again, is elevated blood pressure of much significance? Yes. Eight times the risk of stroke, three times the risk of heart attack, uh, six, I'm sorry, five times the risk of heart failure. So just slightly elevated, just a little bit of blood pressure is enough to take you out of here. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Next slide. I wanted to learn everything I could, so I started researching and going to medical libraries. I was amazed by what I learned. Osteoporosis is a disease that worries a great many women today. In later years, the bones can become thin and fragile, and they can break quite easily. You know, the bones look very thin here. When I was told that I had osteoporosis, um, I became very frightened because I'm still young. And I just, I, I literally just fell apart. I remember going to bed and crying, and my husband came in and said, what's wrong? And I said, I'm disintegrating. 
Osteoporosis is a loss of bone tissue. And as a result, when somebody gets osteoporosis, they've essentially lost 50 to 75% of their bone tissue before they get a fracture. And then what happens is they cough or sneeze and they break a rib or they ride over a bumpy road and they break a backbone. When you look around the world and you see where osteoporosis is common and rare, you're struck by the fact that it's common where people seem to eat the best in the sense when you consume lots of dairy products like in countries such as the United States, England, Finland, Sweden, you have the highest rates of osteoporosis. Where they consume the least dairy products, like in your Asian and African countries, they have the strongest bones, the least osteoporosis. Again, that could be a coincidence, but some don't think it is. And one of the characteristics in, in osteoporosis um, that we, that I think at least is rather important, has to do with the intake of animal protein. Animal protein, for example, has been shown to increase the uh, loss of calcium from the body, which of course puts a person at, at a greater risk. Dairy products contain calcium, which helps to build strong bones. But they also contain concentrated protein, and some suspect that depletes the body of calcium. Dr. Clapper explained the theory. When one eats a piece of concentrated protein, for the next three or four hours, more calcium than usual can be lost out of the body through the urine. And when the body loses this mineral, it replaces it by drawing calcium out of the bones. So a high protein diet, along with smoking and lack of exercise and other factors, may contribute to bones that are thin and fracture easily. Osteoporosis tends to be a, a disease characteristic of, uh, of Western countries, which is really quite interesting because it turns out that in this country, if we list, listen to the traditional information, um, it is suggested that the higher the calcium intake, uh, the lower the risk for osteoporosis in women. And so women are being advised to take more calcium. Uh, but it's rather strange that in China, where calcium intake is so much lower than here, they actually have lower osteoporosis, not higher. Are y'all hearing what's being said? These are experts. They've worked with, have more clinical trials, working with thousands and thousands, literally millions of people to prove that these things are true. And what they're saying is that the milk, the cheese, the, 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 the meats are loaded with cholesterol, and this causes a problem, and the protein itself we're eating all this protein, and when the body tries to digest it, it is so acidic, it is so morbid, full of growth hormones, it's full of all kind of antibiotics, all kind of worms, da, da, da. so the body has to protect itself, so the body secretes calcium. The calcium acts as a buffer to kind of get rid of all that poisonous toxic. It, it, it kind of coats it, and when it does that, it does what? It hardens the arteries and the veins. It hardens the colon. It hardens the bones in the joints. And then the calcium leaves the bones and goes to try to do the work. So now there's less calcium. So women are affected more than, than men. Why? Because they have children. And the children require a good deal of their calcium. So I'm saying to you, uh, once again, one out of every three women are going to be affected with um, uh, the problem of osteoporosis. And osteoporosis, hip replacements, knee replacements, so forth, so on, is a deadly thing. We saw earlier that it said the same cholesterol is the reason for most cancers, high blood, diabetes, arthritis. Most of those are caused by what? Too much what? Protein and cholesterol. Next, next slide. We're almost done, folks. Stay with me just a little bit longer. Now. These diseases that we see so many people affected by, uh, retina, which means macular degeneration, early blindness, is caused by what? Too much, too much protein. Pancreas, same thing. Too much protein. Pancre pancreatic problem, panc pancreatic cancer. Kidney failure, same thing. We're looking at high blood, hypertension. We're looking at all of these are basically caused by what? Too much protein. Next, next slide. So again, we're talking about a silent killer. That's high blood, hypertension. All right, next slide. 
What sort of diet does promote health? Around the world, when people are trim and healthy, they suffer from various diseases that we don't have. For example, they have malaria and cholera and so on. But they don't suffer from the heart disease and the breast cancer and the obesity that we have. And the reason is very simple. They center their diet around starch. Absolutely essential that people understand this. This is not a diet of salads and broccoli and cauliflower that we're talking about. We're talking about a diet of rice and potatoes and other types of grains and vegetables, starchy vegetables, with the addition of fruits and vegetables on the side. And that's what people eat in rural Africa and in China and Japan until they become rich. In China, Dr. Campbell compared regions that are relatively poor to areas which are a good deal more affluent. You might expect the people with a higher standard of living to have better health. Instead, they have more of certain cancers, heart disease, and diabetes. Some believe the crucial difference is this. Affluent people eat more animal products. Animal foods has certain characteristics that I would argue raises the risk for uh, some of these diseases. In contrast, plant foods uh, contain factors that actually prevent these diseases from occurring. A language that you can't forget and deny, this is five pounds of fat. This is what five pounds of fat weighs, and this is what five pounds of fat looks like. And in a few months, many of you may have six or eight of these that you're leaving behind permanently because you're not doing anything strange you're just enjoying a lot of healthy, delicious foods. When patients suffering from heart disease, diabetes, and cancer come to Dr. John McDougall, he gives them a very different prescription. He teaches them a new way to eat. There are some very simple concepts in nutrition. And one very important one is the idea that cholesterol is only present in animal products. There's absolutely no cholesterol at all in any vegetable product. So that gives you a good idea on how to divide your food choices. Animal products are rich foods and should be reserved for special occasions, and vegetable products should be your daily fare. All right, folks, we're almost done. Uh, what I want you to just hear is these are specialists in heart, uh, diabetes, hypertension, uh, osteoporosis. These are the top people in the world in these fields, and they're telling you, that, and he said the best diet was the diet that we talked about. We talked about the best food in combination, which was a part of the Bible. And by the way, I still have uh, books or manuscripts out there that are Bible way. I've been working on this for 45 years. That information that's in there will help you live a higher quality of life. But he's simply saying to you that the problem is not because you're not eating enough, because now that we have more money, uh, to be honest with you, black folks eating better than they ever ate in their lives, all right? I know some folks that actually sit at home, never go out to dinner. What do they do? They get their food. What's the name of the company that does that? Uber. They get it Ubered in. Yeah, they get Uber. Uber lunch, Uber breakfast, Uber dinner, Uber snacks. So we've got the money, but we're eating foods that are full of that which clogs up our arteries, our veins, our stomachs, uh, our joints, if you hear what I'm saying. So bottom line, the best food they're telling us then is a plant-based diet. Next uh, slide, we're almost done. So again, on the left, we see that all the animal products and everything that comes from an animal, including milk, earlier you saw all the women with the mustaches, the white mustaches. Any of y'all old enough, y'all don't look like it because... She looks like she might be 26. What? She says she's 55, looking like a 30-year-old. That's good stuff. You keep it up, okay? But the bottom line, there was a commercial, and the president, the governor, everybody had the boxes, and the, everybody had white mustache. And what was the commercial? What did it say? Got milk. Well, if you got milk, you got mucus. Y'all ain't listening to me. Milk, sugar, and milk is a problem. Together, they form a deadly, deadly situation that causes what? Lots of mucus in your body. Have you ever eaten all that ice cream and your nose just started running on its own? The haagen eh. Boy, that quarter do to you. A whole quarter knock you out. And it goes down so smooth and so easy and so tasty. 
but boy, it'll make you so sick. Your stomach will do a roto rooter. Oh man, I mean, you'd be in trouble because it's not fit. Uh, I'm, I'll probably show you something before we leave in the next week or two, but the bottom line is, imagine here's a daddy and a, and a daughter underneath a cow sucking on his nipples drinking milk. That's just a picture in your mind. But when we're drinking milk, we're the only animals on the planet that'll drink another animal's milk. Monkeys drink monkey milk. Dogs eat dog, drink uh, dog's milk. Alligators drink alligator milk. Y'all let me get away with that. I was just trying to see if y'all were awake. You know alligator with all them teeth ain't drinking no milk. But I <laughs> just want to keep you awake, okay? But the bottom line is, we drink another. Milk is designed for that particular species so the baby can double its weight in a month or so so they can do what? Be able to get up and walk. Some babies, some animals are able to walk within 30 minutes to an hour because they've got to do what? Protect themselves. Our babies, we get a chance to keep them going for nine months or so as we watch them, okay? But we're drinking milk. Now, a cow, a calf will stop drinking milk at about two months, three months. And if he were to go back as a bull or a, a, a big, big cow, a big, big calf, a baby bull, and try to drink some milk, what happened? He get kicked in the face. But we think you got to have what? Milk, because the dairy board gave all of the kindergarten and first grade classes their books, and it told us about the four groups, the brown, the white, the yellow, and the green. So yes, there were some vegetables cooked over here, but the rest of it was meat, cheese, and what? Milk. Y'all getting me? It was milk, I'm sorry, milk, cheese, and uh, what was the, uh, well, eggs, that kind of thing. But the bottom line, all the things that basically cause mucus, and that's what the nutritionists have told us that we should eat to be healthy. And guess what it does? That diet makes us what? Sick, fat, all these diseases. Next slide. So again, high cholesterol, silent killer, go forward. Next slide. Osteoporosis, protecting, have we been there? We, did we see this slide? No, we didn't, okay, osteo, okay, so osteoporosis, let's take a look at it now. We said a little bit about it. Protecting your bones. Next slide. One out of three women oh, over 50 has osteoporosis. We said that, go, go ahead, next slide. Calcium robbers, tobacco and alcohol, caffeine, physical inactivity, excess protein. Once again, protein is in there. Next. Okay, what's wrong with, uh, prote what's wrong with calcium? All the enes are deadly poisonous to your system. Caffeine, theobromine, codeine from drugs. All the enes, the ene family is very, very detrimental to your system because it rushes your bloodstream and it makes it do something that it's not supposed to do. It's forcing it to do something which messes with your immune system, messes with your nerves and uh, so forth to the point where it just causes serious problems. But these are your calcium robbers, tobacco and alcohol, caffeine, physical inactivity, excess protein, there we go again, too much phosphorus. Phosphorus is basically used to, uh, it, you find it in Coca-Cola and other sodas, and you also find it in meat as a preservative, and too much salt. So excess protein is an eating problem. Too much phosphorus is on meat, which is an eating problem. Too much salt is going on our food, which is an eating problem. All these are calcium robbers, which takes calcium out of the bones. Next, next, next slide. Kale, whoa, anybody familiar with kale? Guess where most of your calcium comes from? Green cruciferous vegetables. Uh, those are the, the ones that God uh, gave to man when? I say cruciferous, cruciferous, okay. Cruciferous vegetables. Those are the ones that God gave to man after sin. He gave him the green herbs because the green herbs would do what? Refurbish his blood. His blood had gotten tainted because of sin. Now, with the kale and the cabbage and the spinach and celery, all these green cruciferous vegetables, he literally got what, more blood, more power to his blood, more richness to his blood because the, 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 the chlorophyll that makes plants green and blood are identical in molecular structure. So if you would take them and put them together, they would match. 
So God gave man the green vegetables after sin as a what? A blood transfusion. I can't get you all to get excited, can I? <laughs> that is rich. That is good stuff when you see how the Bible worked. God always gave us what we need. But the green kale, one cup of kale has 179 milligrams of calcium. So do I, if I cook it, will it still have that much calcium? No. So it's actually raw in my salad or I'm going to juice it, okay? Next slide. Next slide. Okay, soy. They tell us that soy causes cancer. Soy is the worst thing that you can eat. I wonder why they tell us that, but yet and still they feed all of the animals soy to make them big and juicy and strong and healthy for you to eat. Why if we go to Asia, remember Asia had only 10 to 20% of people having problems with high blood pressure and cancer and all that stuff? Guess what they eat mostly? Rice and soybean. They're still living to be, there are more uh, centenarians, that means they're living to be 100 years, over 95,000 centenarians in, in, in Japan right now, China. That means they're living to be over 100 years old. They still can think, see, run, do stuff. Their, their eyes are still strong, their voices are strong, and they don't have cancer, high blood pressure, AIDS. Are y'all getting me? And then most of them are not big and fat until they get into the city and get what? Wealthy. Then they can afford to eat more what? Meat. You got it. Okay. Next, uh, next slide. Hmm? Yeah, soybean in different ways. That was soybean. That was uh, uh, soy milk. Soybean curd. Okay, you do, you do a lot with soybean. You can make it look like cheese, like fish, like chicken, like uh, all kinds of things. Uh, it, it, it is a perfectly... Um, necessary food because of the power and the strength that it gives the body without the excess added things that give us the problems, okay? And then you see here almonds, filberts, flax seeds, sesame. Most of your nuts and seeds are loaded with what? Calcium. I'm showing you where the, you can get nut milk, you can get almond milk, you can get soy milk, you can get oat milk. Uh, they make milk out of all those things because they're loaded with what? Calcium, are y'all getting this? They don't let you know. They just make you think they're just doing something for you. But it's, it's what folks have been doing forever. Soy milk is not new. It's been around for 100 years or more. They just did it in places like uh, Asia and so forth. Okay, next uh, slide. Building your bone bank. You need to do weight-bearing exercise. What's the best form of exercise? Walking. What weight are you doing lifting when you're walking? Your body. You're working against your own resistance. And when you're walking, you're moving every muscle, every joint, every ligament and tendon in your body. Reduce your protein intake. They're telling you to reduce what? Your protein intake. Yeah, but the doctor told me I need a high protein, low carbohydrate diet so I can lose weight. Duh! Low carbohydrate? What does your body burn for energy? Carbs, fats and sugars, just not Krispy Kreme sugar and not Colonel Sanders fat. Oh, wow, that's deep, that's deep. Okay, so uh, avoid calcium robbers. We talked about those alcohol and cigarettes and so forth, so on. Uh, get more sunshine because it gives us the vitamin D that mixes with the calcium to give us strong bones, uh, strong hair, strong nails. Uh, eat calcium-rich plant-based foods. That's all of our green cruciferous vegetables. As many of them uncooked as possible. Now, anybody, I want to make sure that nobody leaves here and says the wrong thing about Dr. Franco. Did I say that you couldn't eat meat? Did I say it was a sin and that you're going to die and go to hell if you ate meat? No, I just simply showed you why it's a problem. You have to make the decision. I don't care. You could eat a rhinoceros with pink toenails. Ain't gonna bother me. You see, back in the day, I ate my share. I ate monkey, moose, snake, snail, alligator, Kodiak bear, chocolate covered ants, everything that they said was the coupe de gras, I had to have it. 
But I had a bad back, I had headaches, I had colds, I had all the high blood pressure. And at age 30, I had ED. Me and y'all know what I'm talking about. That's a scary thing. At 30, I thought life was over. But here I am, seven children later. All I'm saying is, that was when I healed at age 30. Woohoo! That's enough. Enough is enough. I'm ready to do something. And I love to eat, so I learned how to make these delicious foods out of plant-based, out of a plant-based diet. And we're going to introduce some of that to you next week because we're going to do something that's called Where's the Beef? What did I say? Where's the beef? We're going to look at how we got to where we are now, biblically, scientifically, how we got to eat in the way we do. We're going to look at that next week. And I'm going to allow you to eat some meat. You know, all the wheat, all the meat you like to eat made from oats and soy and wheat. Shakespeare. Okay, no, no, no. Just letting you know that you'll get a chance to taste something that'll shock you. Because I eat uh, hot tamales, Philly cheese steak, pizza, all of that. Just no animal. And it tastes great. And you'll get a chance to see that too. Next slide. We're getting ready to finish up. Okay, again, high cholesterol is all animal products and all products that come from animals, okay, cheese, milk, all of that is literally loaded with cholesterol. But no cholesterol in vegetables, fruits, grains, nuts, and seeds. No cholesterol. Next, next slide. That should be about it. Next slide, please. Okay, disarming diabetes. Let's quick like, let's look at that. Disarming diabetes. Next slide. Okay, diabetes. I call it diabetes because it's either going to die or beat us. Get it? Okay, I'm trying to make y'all laugh. Explosion of new cases double within 25 years. Over 300 million people. Actually, now it's 715 million people. That slide is about 15 years old. Next slide. What are some of the complications? Just like high blood, some of the compli complications are eye problems, uh, early macular degeneration kidney damage. People ended up on uh, 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 these, sitting on these machines, on dialysis, okay? Heart disease, strokes, aneurysm, all these are complications of diabetes. Okay, next slide. Sexual impotence, men, women too, ulcerative sores, infections, amputations, getting legs cut off, get the foot cut off, then get it cut off to the knee, then get the leg cut off, then go over and start working on the other foot. Are y'all listening to me? Breast and uterine cancers, fibroids, fibromyalgia, all this stuff basically comes from eating the animal products and ending up with diabetes. Next, next slide. Exercise regularly is something that we ought to do to get the body to function. You start exercising, that means the body will digest the food better. When it digests the food, it'll make the colon starts work, start working, and you can do what? actually assimilate the food into the system. It can go to the organs where it needs to go to to make them heal and make them strong. And then it causes the bowels to move like they're supposed to. It brings the pressure down, brings the diabetes down, brings the energy up. Just exercising on a regular basis helps to get these sicknesses and diseases, these hit men, it helps to get them under control. Next slide. Again, they say that you need to, if you want to get rid of diabetes, you need to eat a what? A low-fat diet. Next slide. Low-fat plant-based diet. Okay, and if you're going to eat that plant-based diet, what's, what, what form should most of it be? Raw or live, uncooked. You can eat cooked food, but you need some what? Live to go with it because this is what you need, this is what you want. Okay, next slide. High cholesterol, no cholesterol. I keep putting that before you so you can see that there's no cholesterol, there, there's, there's, there's no mess up, okay, in a plant-based diet. But all of your problems are in the plant-based diet, not in the plant, I'm sorry, are in the uh, animal diet, not in the plant-based diet. Next, next slide. That is what it looks like. The first diet that God gave man was fruit, nuts, grains, and then he added vegetables. If he had wanted you to eat animal products, there would have been hot dog trees, hamburger bushes, and hot wing vines. Okay, I like for us to smile and laugh. Next, next slide. Okay, so <laughs> it calls for a what? 
a permanent lifestyle. You can't keep jumping on, jumping off, jumping on, jumping off, jumping off, jump, and just staying sick. You gotta make a decided change because again, health is not a chance. It's a what? It's a choice. Next slide. Okay, that's it. You can cut it. You can cut it. You can cut it. You can cut it. It just simply says that the liability to take disease is increased by eating animal products. So, uh, a couple of questions, and then I'll be back at the back table. We've been at it for about an hour. Yes. Is it better to exercise in the morning or in the evening? Basically, it's what you can do. Everything that's going to cause for you to expend some energy is best to be done in the morning because that's when your body is what? Strong. See, you've had something to eat and it was called what? Breakfast. Break the fast. That's as long as you'll go without eating because your body has absorbed all the good stuff that you put in the night before. It has had a chance to sleep and rest and have an internal shower. So you wake up with all your brain and your muscles, your joints, your ligaments, your tendons, your heart, your pancreas, your kidney. Everything is strong and ready to go. So if you're going to do something, I would say in the morning, if you could, would be best. Okay. Question? Yes. Well, the, the question is, is whey protein good? We just looked here and saw that everything that's animal or from an animal causes what? All the problems that we have. What is whey protein? It's, it's, it's milk. It's a takeoff, the pure protein out of milk, which is the most dangerous food going. So I'm hoping that's answering the question without me just throwing a lick at whey protein. But whey protein is basically milk. So what about almond milk? Is that a good? What about almond milk? We just showed on the screen that nuts, uh, seeds, uh, grains, milk made from them is great. So oat milk, almond milk, almond coconut mixed is a very creamy milk, okay? Uh, cashew milk is creamy. Don't buy the ones that say sweetened because okay. they're just tasting sweet like a milkshake or like we used to drink condensed milk, okay? They're real syrupy sweet. That's all that is. But if you want milk to replace milk for your cereals and milkshakes and that kind of thing, uh, me, I, I'm, I, I grew up in the city, so I like my grits, okay? I didn't like oatmeal that much, but I like grits and I'd have milk and sugar on them, okay? And uh, so I still like milk. I used to drink milk a quarter at a time. So I like milk. So I drink uh, almond milk, cashew milk, because they're very creamy. But yes, they're good for you, because again, they're not animal byproduct. They're the same plants that we've talked about, plant-based diet, absolutely good for you. We got another question? Yes. question is, if you have cholesterol in your arteries and veins and you begin to eat a plant-based diet, yes, it will get rid of the cholesterol. Because first of all, if I came to your house and your kitchen sink, uh, the, the faucet was running, the sink was stopped up, and the water was overflowing onto the kitchen floor and about to get into the living room on your brand new carpet, would I come in and began to mop the floor? No. That's putting a band-aid. I would go and do what first? Turn off the faucet and then do what? Unplug the sink. So once the water stops flowing over, now I've taken care of the problem. Now I can go do what? Mop up the water. So you don't want to try to get rid of the symptom. You want to go and find out what? The cause. So whatever the cause is, if the cause is too much eggs, I don't need to take some protein for my bloating and burping and griping. I need to get back off the eggs because they're going to cause that because they don't move through the body because eggs don't got no fiber. And if you ain't got no fiber, it ain't going through your body. Am I making sense? Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, it will help to clear out the arteries and veins. You're not putting it back in, so you've stopped the problem. 
now you go and start eating better and you start pulling that cholesterol out of the arteries and veins a little bit at a time and that artery that's closed up will begin to do what? Open back up. Absolutely. Oatmeal is great. Any grain is good. Grits, oats, oatmeal, all that's great for you. Absolutely. Oatmeal in the morning with some fruit and some nuts. Woo! That's a wonderful, wonderful meal. Back in the days, the old folks called it porridge and stuff. It was just oatmeal, just oats and grits and things like that. Absolutely good for you. But you notice you got to have some fruit with it, okay? Apple, banana, peach, raisins. But raisins with some other fruit because raisin is a dried fruit. It's mainly a natural sugar form, but you still don't have any fruit with fiber. So I would have some apple, peach, pear, banana, grapes with the raisins, if you hear what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, one more question, and I'm going to go to the back, and I'll answer all the rest of the questions back there. What you all about, have been a wonderful crowd. Uh, what about uh, bloating in the What about <laughs> bloating and burping? Uh, I, grew up, I grew up in Chicago, and I was a cut-up. And one day I was bending over to pick up a pencil, and when I bent over, air got in my throat. When I came back up, uh, I went, what? Uh, and so I would be at the back of the class just belching and bloating, and everybody would be having a fit and laughing at me, right? And the teacher brought, got me and brought me up to the front room, spanked me with the ruler, and made me stand up in the corner. I got punished. Now I get paid to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, what causes it? Basically, four things real quick like these are that's a great question these are the four things that cause there's only two diseases anybody know what they are indigestion and constipation listen to me carefully I'm gonna take about three minutes on this if you don't have something live with your meal you should have something live with every meal if you don't have live food with it it's not gonna do what move through the body if it doesn't go through the body, that means it's not, it's indigestion. That means what? No digestion. If it doesn't digest, what does it do? It sits, it rots, it putrefies, it turns into morbid material, and it gets reabsorbed into your system to make you sick, but it doesn't go through the body. So that's indigestion by not having something what? Live to go with every meal. How many meals? Every meal, even a snack, popcorn, chips, you need something live, some fruit, some grapes, some sliced cucumber, something to go with it, okay? That's number one. Number two, you don't mix fruits and vegetables at the same meal because fruit is very light. You can digest it. it, it it's almost all water. It digests in your mouth. But some vegetables are very heavy, so they, they need more to digest. So the body secretes hydrochloric acid to break down this heavy starches and proteins and fats. Well, that hydrochloric acid is in there breaking down the heavy food, but the fruit is already broken down. So that heavy, uh, that acid, hydrochloric acid, breaks the fruit down even further, and it becomes an alcohol and an aldehyde. It becomes a gas, and what do you get? <laughs> are you seeing this? Those are two things that cause indigestion, okay? Number three, you don't drink liquids with your meals. But how am I going to swallow it? Because you're going to chew it. If you don't chew it up here, it ain't going to get chewed down here because your stomach ain't got no teeth. Most people do this. Let me see if I can bring up a fork. Okay, there's a fork. Y'all got a Holy Ghost imagination? That's a fork. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and this is a glass, y'all see it? It's a glass with my water and my, uh, my wine, my Budweiser. No, y'all don't do nothing with no wine and Budweiser, do you? No, okay. That's water, this fork. I take a bite of food and I take about three chews. And then I do this. <clears throat> now I'm an actor, so I'm acting. But people will do this. Start watching. What are they doing? They're pushing it down with the what? With the water or the juice or whatever it is because they're not taking time to what? To chew. Are y'all getting that? So they're pushing it down. But if the, if the hydrochloric acid is going to break down the food and you just washed it down with lemonade juice or sweet tea, what did you do to that hydrochloric acid? You diluted it. You washed it away. If the acid's going to break down the heavy food, you wash away the acid. What's going to break down the heavy food? Nothing. What is it going to do? It's going to sit there, rot, putrefy, and make you sick. So those are the three things, basically, that cause us to what? Have indigestion. 
If you have indigestion long enough, then you're going to have what? Constipation. So the father of disease, what sets it all up is what? Indigestion. I just showed you the three things that cause indigestion. You must have fiber with every meal. You must not mix fruits and vegetables together at the same meal. And you don't drink liquids with your meals. Y'all hear that? All right. If you drink your liquids, you drink them 15, up to 15 minutes before you eat. That sets your body. Great question. That sets your body up to be ready to knock that food out. Your digestive juices are flowing good. Your body is hydrated and it's ready. But in between, you make sure that you do the first one. The first one said that you have to have something live with how many meals? Every meal. So if you do that, Holy Ghost imagination again, this is a fork. So now, I'm going to take a little piece of meat, just a little bit on my fork, a little bit. Now I'm going to take a little bitty, bitty bit of macaroni and cheese. And a little bitty, bitty bit of my greens. And a great big fork full of my salad. Now, when you eat a tomato... Do you need water to wash it down with? No, because it's mainly what? Water. When you eat cucumber, do you have to wash it? It's mainly water. Lettuce is mainly what? Water. So if you got a little bit of this stuff and a great big fork full of this, what have you got mainly in your mouth? Water. So if you just do that first one, now you've got enough water. You don't have to drink water. And it's the right water because it came off of the vegetable and it's got what? enzymes and everything it needs to break it down with. So y'all get what I'm saying? You don't have to drink with your meals. But if you do it the other way and just eat cooked, dead, dried food, and it's fried and all that grease, you got hot wing sauce, hamburger sauce, and, and Heinz sauce, and Texas Pete hot sauce, and mm -hmm, salt, boy, they make you want to drink something. I'm making sense. Okay. Folks, she said, no more hot wings. There's some hot wings. They've got hot wings uh, made out of all kind of plants. And they almost make you think you're eating hot wings. You're eating real deal, folks. We're going to close with this scripture. Three, uh, no, not three John 2. Uh, that's a good scripture. Uh, but we're going to close with Romans 12, 1 and 2. What scripture did I say? Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may find what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 2, well, 1 and 2, a 1 and 2, no, no, no. Not because I sing so well, but because God is saying to you, don't be what? Conform to the world. If everybody else is eating the Mickey D's, Captain D's, one of these, some of these, all of these, go home and have a sack lunch. Y'all listening to me. Just be renewed by the renewing of your mind. Last Wednesday and tonight, I've given you information that's free. You can go home and live a higher quality of life. Pastor Bartholomew Orr thought enough of you to bring this man with this funny hat and, and a big jug of water to you. But has it made any sense to you up to this point? Do you, are you, is anybody getting something out of this that's helping you to change your life a little bit? Okay. Well, less is best, my sister said. Absolutely. Because think about, think about a bull or a horse or a racehorse. Do they eat a whole lot of food? No, they eat little bits of what? Grass and wheat and oat and so forth. But are they weak? Are they big and fat? Well, you got one sitting over eating all the food. Yeah, but most of them are strong, muscular, gorilla, elephant. They're all what? Vegetarians. So all that you need is in the plant. So don't forget that. Folks, I love you. Plum, please, and pleasure. Tell somebody else about it. Bring them back next Wednesday. I look forward to seeing you then. I'll be at the back table. God bless until the next one.